Bite! 57th Expedition Beyond the Walls, part three. How are they gonna resolve this? Cover your ears, everyone. A noise grenade. I like how Levi's turning this crisis into a teaching experience. Oh no, these people, they're just sacrificing their lives. Not him, that's for sure. Just don't look. Just stop, stop looking. Yeah, that's great advice. You don't want to see this. Yes. Trust in Erwin. Oh, what is he doing? This is not a normal Titan, though. This is not just something you, you knock out with one punch. If this is a Mikasa Titan, she's gonna own you. <laughs> yeah, he's gotta think more as a group, as opposed to just what he wants. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Did Levi see the flashback too? Everybody in this show always calls Eren a monster. And that has multiple meanings, and Levi's the first one to say that out loud. He's nuts. Part of Eren's journey, I feel like, is just learning how to live as a human being. So far, Eren feels like one of those cautionary tales, like a gangster movie or something, like Scarface, where just somebody wants something so badly and is motivated by, like, just tremendous bitterness and frustration and wanting to be at the top. And then ultimately they get what they want because they have more ambition than anyone else, but the end result is hollow. There's nothing there. They end up sad and alone and probably dead. The motivations for what he wants, it doesn't feel to me like hope. It doesn't feel like dreaming. It doesn't feel like ambitions. It just feels like rage. And that rage will just consume everything. We saw that alluded to, I think, in the dream sequence where literally his whole childhood and life burned. That's a good metaphor for Eren's internal state in life. <laughs> That's for damn sure. It's cool hearing Levi talk about this because of what we know about him, what we learned about him from Petra. He is like Eren in a way. He's incredibly willful, and he's not going to submit to anybody either. But I think if you live that life, you realize there are limitations to that because you need to have some kind of structure and some kind of faith in something. You need to have a ground base because without that, you're just going to destroy yourself. Everything is a slight. Everything is an attack. And I think one thing that can be difficult for people who are really intelligent or people who have a natural contrarian view or can sort of like see the cracks in things, it's really easy to get jaded and cynical. And it's also really easy to over value your own intelligence and think that you're better than everyone and that you're outside of the system somehow or that only you can see the truth. And while that can be really appealing for people like that, that's a very weak state to operate from. And there's a much stronger state to operate from, which is like, okay, well, let me find something better then, right? Like it's easy to knock down and destroy. It's hard to build something solid. And so even though I don't know that much about his backstory, I'm imagining Levi just sort of like being this hateful kid who could justify his own crime and things like that. But then he found something better, which was Erwin, because Erwin is not weakness. Erwin is not stupidity. Erwin is an example of like a higher functioning thing where you're operating in the system, but you're doing it openly and honestly and without self-delusion. And also at a high level of mastery. That's the aspiration. It's not being a blind follower of society and conventions. It's also not being a blind hater of society and conventions like Aaron and how he thinks everybody who lives within the walls is stupider than him. It's like, okay, well, how do I make something better myself? That is the more honorable thing. So Levi's been there and back. Right? Like Levi actually has something he can believe in that's not a lie for him to follow and actually really value. Aaron hasn't found that yet, and what's cool to think about is that Levi can actually now return the favor to Aaron. He can pass that along, because that would be great for Aaron. <laughs> yeah, he's been there too. He's been there and back. I feel like you can believe in both, but you gotta believe in something. <laughs> Yeah, and that's a key part of it too, is like, you make the choice openly and you make the choice honestly with yourself. You don't try to pretend that you like something when you don't. And you gotta be convicted in it. But I feel like the survey corps are good for Aaron. Yeah, this is interesting. This is like really about like Aaron's faith. What does he believe in? It's not just about him having faith in the survey corps. It's about him right now being faithless. Or it's not a lack of faith necessarily. It's like he has a bad faith. He believes too heavily in his own reasoning abilities. It doesn't feel like confidence to me. It feels more like arrogance. And part of that is because there's a judgment about others that comes through. It's him putting himself and his values above everyone else. And anybody who doesn't agree is scum. <laughs> Yeah, 
They haven't really tested it that far. He just grew back a tooth. I would not want to be at the receiving end of her experiments. Those are bad thoughts to have when you're about to go into this state. <laughs> Gotta think positive. Maybe it's like the Avatar state. You gotta be in a life or death situation. The bite. He tried twice. You gotta like put him in the moment. Oh no, now he's gonna have like a conflict about it. I feel like this is gonna send him in a downward spiral. When he starts doubting himself, you can't go there. But have you tried firing a cannon at him? Oh, better yet, fire a cannon at Armin. You could try slowly submerging them into sand. Eren doesn't have any pets though, so that's out. I feel like Eren could use a pet. He couldn't be so salty if he had Appa. Nobody could. <laughs> You gotta find a better method than this hand biting too. What? Why now? Yeah, that's what I said. Why does this feel so embarrassing? It feels humiliating. They're ready to go. Damn, look at Petra. <laughs> She's so excited. I mean, he obviously can't control it. This again? How do you want him to prove that? That doesn't make any sense. How do you want him to prove that he's not an enemy to humanity? How do you prove that? I'm freaking out, damn. Yeah, thank you, I'm with Aaron on this one. Take a breath, go back to your lunch. Never been happier to see Hanji. His hand is healed, I'm guessing. Yeah, you could have tried some other stuff first. Yeah, exactly. That was a wasted opportunity. I feel irritated by everyone yelling at me. They kind of chumped themselves out getting so panicky about it. They're supposed to be cool. Only Levi and Hanji retained their dignity there. Alright, that makes some sense. This feels like Levi really cares about them, which we've seen before in his first appearance with the dying soldier. Mm, you need to have a goal. Yeah, yeah. What are you trying to turn into a titan? What are you trying to turn into a titan? Nice. Solidarity. Yes, back to the action. There you go. Have faith in something other than yourself. Still hurts though. Oh damn, she's picking up speed. This is really big for Aaron. Was that a trap? There he is! Nice! Damn! Whoa! How do they set this up? Like I said, trust in Erwin. Higher faith. I mean, looks like they did a great job of it so far. You talk big now, but they did have faith. 
高烈の藩が命を落として戦ってくれたおかげで時間が稼げたそうか彼らのおかげでこいつのうなじの中にいるやつとは会える中で小便漏らしてねえといいんだが Why is Erwin such a badass? I'm obviously very curious who's inside. Looking at the Titan, it seems like Mikasa. And I've always suspected Mikasa of having Titan powers. But Mikasa is there. She's guarding the entrance of the forest. But because I don't know enough about the parameters of the show's world, there could be two Mikasas for all I know. Like, I don't know. Could be anything. There's definitely something mystical happening, like time travel or dimensional shifting or something like that. Or some kind of weird universal cycle. Whatever it is. So, two Mikasas, not off the table. Maybe it's just girl Armin. I just say that because she's blonde. But also because he just said something about like, I hope they didn't piss themselves. That's what I think it was John John or Reiner said to Armin at the beginning of this whole expedition. But that could be a coincidence. The best part of this episode for me by far, aside from the awesome Titan capture by Erwin, is actually seeing some growth and development from Eren. I don't mean to be too hard on him. Like I actually can relate quite strongly. Like I think that's an easy place to be in, especially when you're young. You know, it's very easy to become bitter and it's very easy to become in love with your own, your own views of the world. And it's easy to become cynical of others' views of the world and think that, you know, they're, they're misleading themselves or they're not understanding things or they can't see what you can see and there's sort of like a spite a spiteful feeling that comes with that but that also i think is an ignorant position and i say that because i think there are better positions to have which is like okay things are not perfect i'm not going to make them worse i'm not going to feed into the negativity i'm not going to make things more hateful if i see a problem i'm going to rise above it and become better than that and actually create good things in the world there's an opportunity there you know there's an opportunity to that state which is like all right well if you see that things are are not ideal how do you put aside the spiteful and hateful part of that and how do you actually you know make meaningful and productive efforts towards fixing it or changing it and a lot of times that starts with yourself anyway you can't just shift society at your whim right and also you're probably not qualified to shift society at your whim Unless you have control of yourself, unless you really know what you believe in and who you are. Anybody can tear things down. Not many people can build things to be better. I mean, people can't even build themselves to be better in most cases. And in that light, there are great things to Aaron. You know, like, he can see things in a way other people can't see them. He has a drive other people don't have. But the way he's operating, he needs to supplement that with, like, a healthier view of the world and a less hateful view of the world and a less arrogant view of the world. And he can actually create something beautiful with his abilities and his talents. But it starts with, like, finding out, okay, what actually is valuable to me? What do I really believe in? Not out of fear, not out of necessity but like what actually feels pure and good. How can I create like a rock for myself to stand on while I explore other things, while I work on improving myself, you know? And in my mind, since the series started basically, the lowest hanging fruit I can see for him is his friends and his comrades. And I think that's especially true of the Survey Corps because this is more than just a military branch, right? This is more than a job. These are people who have been selected for their values and being willing to give their life for something they believe in. And so that seems to me like a good thing to place your faith in if you're gonna place faith in anything. And like I said, it seems like Levi has sort of been there already. Levi probably started out somewhere near where Aaron is now. He found Erwin who he actually can honestly respect. Like I think that's an important part of the equation is like honest respect, honest regard. Things you find that you can't ignore are a higher calling. That's a good compass, I think. And Erwin seems to be that for a lot of people, not just Levi. And then Levi in turn can be that for other people, including Aaron. So that's really cool for me to see. Then we also have the explicit reveal of the fact that Eren needs a clear goal. He can't just turn into a Titan at his whim, which is probably a good thing. But yeah, I hope we find out who this Titan is next episode. I can't wait to see who it is. Although I feel like we'll find out who it is. It'll be a big shock and then it'll still be really unclear why that is. That's just my hunch. But yeah, we'll find out when I see you next time in episode 20. That is the end of the video. But before we go, it is that time of the week again to give special Patreon shout outs to those who joined the top tier. Juan Vasquez and Goldie. Thanks to you guys and thank you to all my patrons. It's your support that makes these videos possible and that allow me to do this. So you have my eternal and undying gratitude for now and all time for, for supporting me and making this possible. For those interested in Patreon, videos are one week ahead there, more than one week ahead there in some cases. So check that out if you're interested. Otherwise, love you guys as always, and I'll see you next time.